you can do this. You can find tired landlords or developers who have got stock where they've built them, they've not been able to sell them, and they now want an avenue where it can now generate some income for them. Hi guys, it's Arshil Ahi, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the deals that I've done in 2022, and I'm gonna do a mini breakdown of each of them and showing you how you can do it too. Now, before we do that, I just wanna say a quick thank you to all those that have reached out to me and asked me if I'm feeling okay, because I haven't been on camera for a few weeks, and I just wanna let you know that I'm back, and hopefully you really enjoy this video. Now, as you know, the videos on this channel is sponsored by the Property Investor app, which is the UK's first property investment platform, which showcases all kinds of deals all over the UK. Whether you're looking for that below market value deal, that rent to rent deal, that lease option deal, we've got them all there. Go and check us out. There are two ways to get involved. You can either go to the website, which is propertyinvestorapp.co.uk, or if you've got a smartphone, go to the app store, type in property investor and download it from there. So in today's session, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about at the start of this year, 2022, I said to myself, I wasn't going to acquire any more properties. I felt like we kind of had enough properties within the portfolio and I thought we're going to concentrate and consolidate on that portfolio. The reality is that I've actually taken on the best part of 40 units and probably one of the most aggressive years that I've had to date for, for a while actually. And I'm going to go through the strategies which I did because believe it or not, I've not actually bought any of the ones that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So property number one, and they may go in order, I may jump around a bit, so please stay with me. Property number one, which is probably one of my most memorable deals, is a block of apartments in Nottingham. So I was approached by a developer who had built these properties in Nottingham. Originally, they wanted to sell them, but as a result of not selling them, they asked me if I would lease the properties off them over a period of time. Now, I've done a deal with these guys for a minimum of three years, but for a maximum of seven years. Now, I'm actually paying the owners the best part of £6,000 a month. I don't mind disclosing figures here, by the way, but I've now rented, so I've rented this block off this owner. I'm paying them £6,000 a month. Now, I've not had to pay a deposit, I've not had to pay any rent up front. I actually got a rent-free period for two months. In that time, it allowed me to go and stage the property. It allowed me to go and furnish the property. So I had to put some money into this deal. I think off memory, it was approximately the best part of £30,000. So there's a lot of money at stake here. So I've put in £30,000. But if I was to go and buy this property normally, and I had to acquire the whole block, I would have had to spend the best part of £1.5 million to buy it. Now that's with a, without a mortgage, of course. And then you've got all the other acquisition costs, stamp duty, legal costs, mortgage, surveyors costs and all the other bits that go along with it so let me ask you a question would you like to spend 30,000 or would you like to spend near enough the best part of 1.8 million pounds which is what it probably would have cost you when you're adding all the additional costs I know which one I did the one that I would choose over and over again I spent 30,000 pounds so that 30,000 pounds it allowed me to get all the furniture in place it allowed me to get it pretty much ready to run a service accommodation now at the time people were unsure of this but I knew gut down that in my gut that this was actually a good property great location and this property is now generating the best part of 16,000 pounds a month on average so that property is actually generating 10,000 pounds a month now that's one property Let's go to property number two. So that one had seven units in. Second property is a block of nine apartments in Wolverhampton. Again, I've done a similar deal with this where I found a developer who had a block of apartments and they didn't want to manage them or manage all of them. And off the back of that, I took one floor of the whole building where I'm giving the owner a guaranteed rent. And again, they're now run on service accommodation. So I'm mixing my strategies here. I'm doing rent to rent. And once I've acquired the property, I'm then running get a service accommodation so you could in essence say that i'm doing rent to service accommodation and that block 
is actually built, you know, net approximately around £6,000 a month. It's slightly less than Nottingham because the rates are less and because of the location, but it actually does really well. And again, at a very high occupancy level. One, uh, probably a good deal that I've done within the last four weeks is a block of nine apartments in Manchester. Now, what's memorable about this deal is that it's not costing me anything to do the deal, not a single penny out of my own pocket because the vendor is actually funding the whole transaction. They've leased me the property, but in actual fact, they're actually paying all the money to do the refurb on the property. So I've got a rent-free period whilst we do the work. I'm actually only having to manage the whole process. So I can't confirm the cash flow yet, but according to my calculations, it should be within the region, um, a worst case scenario, 3,000. Best case scenario, it could be up to 10,000. So we've got quite a large margin for error in there as well. I'm really looking forward to that property. It's gonna take us approximately three months to convert it. And then off the back of that, we're then gonna run that as a mixture of uh, long-term lets and also service accommodation. Now, the reason why I do both is because if it doesn't work as service accommodation, I've got a plan B associated with that. So we're gonna see how that goes, but I'm really interested in how that's gonna go because it's actually in Salford. It's actually two miles away from both football stadiums. So you've got Manchester United, you've got Manchester City, then you've got Manchester City Centre, then you've got the MEN Arena, you've got all so much happening in Manchester City Centre. So it'd be really interesting to see what goes on with that. I'll keep you posted. We're gonna start work on that next week, believe it or not. And I'm gonna try and vlog the whole process. I'm gonna vlog the whole journey so that you can see what we're doing to that property. So that's property number three. Now we've got some smaller properties that I think we've probably talked about on my YouTube channel throughout the year. Remember, these are properties that I've acquired throughout 2022. There's a small four bedroom. When I say four bedroom, it's actually four studio flats within a house within Wolverhampton. That is fully occupied. I spent approximately 500 pounds to bring that property up to standard. And that was literally redecorating the internal communal hallways and some of the vacant bedrooms. And that now generates approximately 800 pounds a month. So you can still see the generating decent money. And the key thing here is down to the negotiation, not only of the rent level, but also potentially a rent free period. Also the deposit that's payable. I've not paid a deposit on any of these properties. And the reason why I'm sharing this story with use you can do this you can find tired landlords or developers who have got stock where they've built them they've not been able to sell them and they now want an avenue where it can now generate some income for them and you look at it from a point of view how can you create it so it creates a win-win for all parties involved now we're going to the next two properties believe it or not are single let properties so they're nothing creative like a hmo they're nothing creative like a service accommodation they are pretty much rented out on a single let basis to a single family and if you're starting out this is a great strategy because if you're not 100 sure about hmos you're not sure about the strategic or some of the aggressive strategies like service accommodation you can take a single let and just run it as a single let and the key here is just making sure that the rent level that your painted landlord is a respectable level uh, rent level so that the money that you generate from the tenant is sufficient to generate some cash flow and i'm going to give you an example i think we talked about one on my youtube channel previously of a house that i took off a landlord now i'm giving the landlord approximately 300 pounds a month for the house the house needed some work with this one in particular so i spent the best part of five thousand pounds on this house now i've got this house and i've converted it into a nice house so lots of cosmetic work went into it but that house is now rented out at 800 pounds a month so it produces a decent cash flow of around 500 pounds a month remember i spent five thousand pounds on this house i've got the house for seven years so it's going to take me the best part of a year to generate my capital back but off the back of that i'm then going to have six years worth of cash flow and it's in a great location with that property in particular i've also got the option to purchase so if the prices increase i'm going to win twice on that property another property again it's a small one bedroom flat so again i've done rent to rent on single lets multi lets blocks of apartments i've even done rent to rent on pieces of land where i can go off and get planning you can do this on every style of property 
but you've just got to be good at your negotiation. You've got to understand your numbers and you've got to be able to negotiate with the landlord. So the next property is very much a one bedroom and flat, just rented out to, again, uh, individual. But the rent that I'm giving to the owner is enough for me to make a margin so that I can pay the landlord and also generate a profit. So the one bedroom and flat, I think we're giving the landlord approximately 300 pounds a month. I think it's 300 or 350 pounds a month. We've got that generating 600 pounds a month. So the one bedroom flat. So again, the margins aren't massive, but they are still enough to keep us ticking over. Again, another two to 300 pounds a month cash flow. And then finally, we've got a HMO, which is uh, again, in the heart of Wolverhampton city center. And I'm giving the landlord approximately 800 pounds a month. And that property is generating a cash flow of around a thousand pounds a month. Now, why am I telling you all these? Why am I sharing my numbers with you? Answer is simple because other than the property in Nottingham and perhaps the one where I've had to put five thousand pounds in, the rest of them, in actual fact, have been gifted to me. When I say gifted to me, I've found the owner, I've negotiated the deal, I've made sure that they make sense not only on paper but from a spreadsheet point of view. I've done lots of research by speaking to agents, doing the comparables to make sure that the properties are definitely going to stack up and as a result i've just said yes i said yes let's do the deal let's get moving forward now my intention wasn't this at the start of the year my intention was to actually slow down but i've realized that if i don't take those properties on someone else will which means that in actual fact i'm leaving money on the table so i had two options i could either take these properties on or i could turn them away my third option could have been that i could have sourced them out to another investor which means that someone else would have had to have taken them and when i looked at them i thought well in actual fact they're offering me a property i'm not having to pay any rent up front I'm not having to pay any deposit other than the ones where i've had to put money in where i've had to stage the property or provide some furniture why wouldn't i do it it's almost like a gift it's almost like someone put it in your lap and said take it and this is what i'm saying to you guys be receptive to every opportunity that comes your way you don't have to say yes to it straight away but buy yourself the time buy yourself the time to allow you to do that research process and only once you've done the research you can go back to the landlord and say, yes, I really like this deal or I'm not so sure about this. Can we negotiate? Remember, you're not saying yes and you're not committing yourself to anything straight away. And that's a key point. Get yourself to a position where you bought yourself some exclusivity to the deal. And that's a big thing, really. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video. I really hope that this has inspired you to show you that you can actually do a deal where you don't need any money in property. I've talked to you about multiple deals here where they don't need money. You've literally taken on someone else's tired property property and you've turned it around whether that be from a physical aspect whether it be from a material you know from a design aspect you can see that I'm actually in my wife's office here she's got a better office than me I don't know how that's worked but it has but you can you know very cheaply or very economically should I say that you can turn a space into a fantastic you know styled and design friendly space and you can charge and command a decent rent for it and therefore generate a profit from that property. I've done it multiple times over and over again, and I'll continue to do it. People keep saying that I should slow down, but if this year's taught me anything with everything that's happening in the economy, you can't afford to slow down. Interest rates are going up. Energy rates are going up. We're not sure what's going to happen in the mortgage market. We're not sure what's happening in the money markets. So it doesn't pay for you to slow down. You've got to stay ahead of the game and keep going so that you can actually play your own game and not worry about what other people are doing. The one thing I will say is that the economy is happening one thing, but you're actually in charge of your own destiny. So Go out, take advantage of all the opportunities you can. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully it once inspired you to go out and do something. If you want to get in contact with me, go to my website, which is rshilahi.com forward slash contact and send me a message. Just let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. As well as that, as I said at the start of this video, that all these videos are sponsored by the Property Investor app, which is the UK's first property investment platform, which showcases deals all over the country. So whether you're looking for that below market value deal, that rent to rent deal, lease option deal, service accommodation, or deal we've got them all there now if you want to connect with me on social media please feel free to find me on facebook linkedin instagram twitter clubhouse and tiktok i've now joined tiktok i'm a talker or a ticker don't know what the terminology is go and find me it's all under the handle of arshalahi and if you want more free content and you like little snippets like this go and check out my podcast i release a podcast every tuesday at 6 a.m it's called the property rebel 
and you can go and find it on all podcast stores. So whether that be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, that's just the name of a few of them. Go and check it out. It's called The Property Rebel. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the session. As always, any questions, please feel free to get in contact. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button and I'll speak to you all very soon. Thank you and bye-bye.